Welcome, if you're new to my channel, I teach all things freight brokerage and sales. Hit that like button, subscribe to my channel for more updates on upcoming videos. And today's video is all things freight brokerage. And I want you to go ahead and write these down. Um, as you're writing them down, it's important that you understand um, supply chain. This isn't just about getting an order and delivering an order. Product not available at the promise of check. Another thing that could be a defect is the manufacturing's late. Sometimes suppliers will reallocate their inventory to another client because their client is not. You know the squeaky wheel gets paid? Because a client is not showing that they need that product with urgency, then they might reallocate that material to another customer that may be screaming a little bit louder. The actual demand exceeded the forecast. So another one, credit hold. Do you know how many suppliers might be on credit hold? They might put their customer on credit hold because of some reason, way or another. Because I've worked in international sales for so long, um, customers that I had, or I would consider customers, I gained an international position because I spoke Spanish. And um, when I went to Mexico, I was, an, I was a collection agent. That's what I did. I went down there to collect money. So credit hold might be a reason why the, the, there's, a, there's a stop in the supply chain. Order released to the warehouse too late. Or maybe the freight provider delivered late. Maybe the person that delivered the raw materials before they had to put these little caps on the top of the of the product. So maybe maybe ingots came in and then they have to put little green rubber stamps on them that show that they 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 are made by uh, by ITW rubber. And so they might have these little green rubber stamps on them. So um, the 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 shipment before may be late, which then caused the ripple in the supply chain. Uh, maybe the customer picked up late. Maybe there was a price discrepancy. Uh, maybe there was a quality control discrepancy. Do you see how many defaults there possibly could be? And if we can define that failure, understand it, be able to be someone that is knowledgeable in the industry, where we're just not order takers, where we're saying, do you want some fries with that? Would you like to upgrade that Happy Meal? As long as you're not quick to, to accept something from a client, not knowing what the criteria or the expectations are, um, being able to just slow down, relax, and be able to know how things are maneuvered and what is the strategy um, and there's a three-step plan, okay? And the first one is plan out what your customer might say. Some of the things that a customer might say is, I need this picked up immediately. That's a key that you need to up your rate. Oh, you have two or three days to pick this up. That gives you an opportunity to build the lane, right? So... Planning can really help you to know whether or not there's something wrong in the cycle of supply chain, all right? Um, another thing is knowing your customer's source. And how do you know your customer's source? Um, and, and this is where you can now be more than just a transaction. Once you receive the product and you can see the commodity, right? One of the things you're doing is you're shipping outbound. Why not ask the customer for their inbound material? Every customer that's shipping outbound, right? Also has raw materials coming inbound. So when you're starting to get a relationship built, with your shipper, discuss their inbound and their source of their product. Say, I know I'm receiving these loads every Wednesday, going from Fort Wayne, Indiana to Laredo, Texas. 
I'm sure you have inbound product too. Do you handle the inbound? Having these questions, um, because sometimes it will be the person that you're speaking to. If they're a smaller company, they might be handling the inbound or they can refer you to the person that's handling um, the source of the product. So there's always going to be a source that comes in. There's always going to be several products that come in to build something. Can I share something with you? To build a gas tank for an automotive industry, do you know how many suppliers I had for my client who was a gas tank supplier for Ford and Chrysler? I had 28 suppliers that built a gas tank. And when the PT Cruiser came out, do you remember when the PT Cruiser? Nobody likes the PT Cruiser now. But it was a really popular car in the early 2000s. And I will tell you that when that car came out, the supplier demand in order to get these gas tanks out so that they can now go into the PT Cruiser um, was astronomical. I mean, they were flying parts. From, from the U.S. into Mexico by plane in order to get those products onto the line and get them inside um, and get them built and put back on a truck back to the U.S. So understanding that the source of your customer could be upwards to 50, if not 60 suppliers just to make one product. Does that make you really see how lucrative of a business when you land a client, how lucrative it is, how if a client says no to you, uh, maybe only gives you one shipment, why not try to find out the source, build yourself in all avenues, ask your clients questions like, do you ever fly parts to your clients? Do you ever have a need for international? Do you ever have any product coming into the ports? Asking questions. And then as you learn new things, okay, I want to share something with you. At the bottom of your emails is a great place to advertise what you do. For me, I advertise that I am, I have 20 something years of experience in door to door to Mexico. Having those uh, those written advertisements is showcasing not just the capability statement that they have to actually open as a PDF, but you can now use um, interchange. Maybe one month of uh, February, you want to learn um, about international shipments and how it functions and and who you would get in contact in order to get quotes that's a that's where you'd want to go to your mentor and maybe ask them hey can i have some one-on-one -on -one to find out how does the supply chain work for international and who would i contact for a flatbed in order to get a quote who would i contact in order for to get a quote for a van who would i contact in order to get a quote for air who would i contact in order to get quotes for for the ports Having yourself not just uh, allowing yourself just to understand transportation, but every month focus on a subject. Focus on a learn, a learning curve. For example, you could use the month of February, the rest of this month of February to, to learn about um, rail. And maybe for the month of March, you want to learn about LTL. And maybe for the month of April, you want to learn about container work. And maybe for the month of May, you want to learn about international. Uh, maybe for the month of June, you want to do overdimensional. Continue to build your portfolio and interchange them as advertisements every couple of weeks on your emails in big red. Say, click here if you want to know more information. Maybe build some some videos of what you have done, or if you haven't done anything yet, um, have somebody that you partner with that will give you some real live uh, um, footage so you can build a really cool 
um, YouTube video or a, a Dropbox where they, if they click on it, they can they can they can read um, all about what you are doing. So come up with a plan that you when you are working um, these clients, of finding clients that as you're going through the process that you're also learning just over the last two and a half months. Um, but finding those 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 gurus or finding those mentors um, that will give you not just uh, maybe a basic information and then you doing the research yourself in order to really build a portfolio that is um, great for you. The number third one um, is making it happen. Not standing around and saying, well, I am glad that I have this company or I'm glad that I'm an agent for a company um, and I'm glad that I'm doing this, but um, I just don't understand why it's not working for me. I don't understand why, why I haven't got any customers. I'm not for understanding why um, things are... Um, going well for others and not going well for me. Um, so this is my three um, areas that you as a business owner, an entrepreneur, whether you're an agent, where you own your own company, um, or whether you are an employee, these three areas are the type of areas you need to work on. Did that video blow your mind or what? So much information. Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications.